Good afternoon everyone, how are you all? Thank you for joining me in studio today. My name is Tony Darrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Creating Craft. And I love anything to do with crafting, so die cutting, stamping, watercolouring, all the good stuff. And I know that's what you guys love at home because you tune in week on week, so thank you very much. If you are watching the channel for the first time, don't forget to click the subscribe button. You'll get all the notifications telling you when we are doing a video um, and you'll also get the quick sped up videos as well. So if, you're a bit, if you feel you're a bit more of an advanced crafter, you can just watch the sped up videos and maybe just pick up some inspiration. You do not have to buy our products to watch this channel. This channel is absolutely free. Albeit we love you to buy our products, but obviously budget permitting some people can some people can't afford it look through your stash because if you're an avid crafter like the rest of us you'll have something in your stash that works anyway in today's studio i'm just going to talk you through some brand new products that we're going to be launching on create and craft tomorrow before i do go through that though i'm going to get set up so here's a little bit of inspiration So that was Monday Studio. I had great fun doing that one. And I've had a lot of messages about um, the white flowers. So I'm pleased you've all got a little bit of inspiration from that because obviously if you're wanting to colour lilies and things like that, you could just pop the little pink spots in the centre and then you're good to go with a white lily. It's, it's really achievable. So I encourage you to keep going with it. Try maybe some lighter shades of grey, some lighter shades of blue, and you do get the look of a white flower, which is fabulous. So in today's studio, I'm going to talk you through what's going to be live on Create and Craft tomorrow. So if you are at work, which we all have to work, uh, you need to click record at 8 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So I've got two live hours tomorrow and we've got just a small collection. This is the last launch of the year. Um, I might be back for a sales show at some point, but obviously this is the last uh, new launch that we've got. And then got lots of new goodies coming in January, February as well. So I'm just going to show you quickly what I've got in my hands here and then if 
Obviously, if you like any of the products, the products are available on website as from tomorrow. I do encourage you though, if you are wanting them all, check Create and Craft first because they do the bundles um, at a discounted price. Obviously, we sell them as well, but if you are wanting to save a little bit of money um, and you are a club member over on Create and Craft, that's the best place to go. Okay, uh, but only get what you can afford. So, I'm going to show you these um, three lovely easels which we've created. I showed you a sneak peek on Facebook quite quickly and I showed you some finished samples. Um, I haven't got the finished samples now because I've gone to TV, so I do encourage you to go back and watch the Facebook Live. So, we have something different. So, this is the angelic easel. So, it's a circular one with detail and it comes with your stoppers. It's probably better if I show you the reverse. So, this is your die and this creates the easel part of it. So, you have your score lines in there so you don't have to worry about where my score in it, how is it going to stand, things like that. You have your mat and lay, you have your two stoppers and then you have your decorative element. Um, really, really easy and I will show you um, that in a demonstration that I'm going to do. So this one is the angelic easel and this is more circular. Then we have classic easel which is more square and it has a square centre. Again, all great curves on these so you can build your flowers around, build wreaths, build corner embellishments and things like that. And again on the reverse, you have this part here. You also have this QR code excuse me and I have been recording all week hence the reason why my back is in bits I've been recording all week so when you come to scan the fabulous QR code on this um, everything will be there that you need to talk through how to do them what to do and some different ways of using them and then we've got ornate easel here so this is more all oval and ornate and then again on the back here you can see you get your two stopper elements so if you just bought these or one of these you have everything you need to create an easel Okay, all you need to do then is get the rest of your stuff out your stash and build on it. However, I have put some other things in the collection for you. So, we have floral banners one, excuse me, floral banners one and floral banners two. Now, these are different, really different. They'll look the same as probably some of the other things that we've brought to you, but they are different in the sense that they stamp and then they die cut, but the die cut pushes out all the elements so you can paper piece them back in and they give you like a skeleton flower. They are truly amazing. I have absolutely loved using these. So you get your stamps in there, you get your coordinating dies and you can see there, <coughs> excuse me, all those punched out elements are the paper piecing and you'll see that um, on TV tomorrow so make sure you tune in and then we've got these lovely banners and again these banners stay solid for your stamping element and then you get your paper piece flowers at the top so they are stunning can we see that there so you get all this bit say solid the flower paper pieces back in and these fit seamlessly within your frames so they're sized perfectly to go with the frame so they're not going to be overwhelming they're not going to overcome the center area they are sized perfectly so we've got those two. We have shields. So again, heat embossed, these look stunning. And again, sized perfectly for the centers of your easel. So the shield will sit inside the center of the easel. You can use these as stoppers at the base instead of your traditional card stopper. There's so much you can do with these. And the sentiments have been shaped as well to go within the shaped uh, embellishments. So that's that. And then last one, we couldn't do a, a collection without flowers, I'm sorry. So we have our blush peonies. And again, these are really small. Well, small, I say small, smaller than our big flowers. They're probably still bigger than most. Um, so you get this large one here and then you get the beautiful green foliage here. And these are quite big. So you can basically do wreaths, corner embellishments, watercolour your flowers, use your new alcohol markers if you've got those, your oil pestle oil pastel pencils will work seamlessly on these and you get your coordinating dies there on the reverse as well and that's the end of that collection quite a small one but we do understand it is Christmas and people's budgets are tight including my own so just get what you can afford okay guys so I'm going to show you a, a lovely demonstration on how to chop them up and change them up a little bit so let's get the one that I'm going to be working I'm going to go for the classic easel for this demonstration And let's first of all explain how it works. So this is your die look. It's huge. So you're not going to have a little tiny card that's going to sit on mantelpiece and look like it's a gift card. Well, it's a full size card. I think this is about a six and a half by six and a half card blank it's going to make, okay? So let me just show you. It probably become clearer when we die cut it. 
So let's just get a piece of black cardstock. Pop it on here. I'm just going to um, get the camera to go up a little bit, if that's okay, because um, I don't think we're getting everything in shot there. Thanks, Adrian. So I'm just going to place that face down on there so you can see how big this is. Thank you very much. And so you can see it's an A4 card. So this is going to create the uh, makings of your easel. So I'm just going to run this through. Oh, it looks like I've come prepared what I've already done one. But I will show you it straight out of the die cutting machine so I can explain to you exactly how it works. Just in case nobody, some people don't know what an easel is. I appreciate probably most of you will know what an easel is. But, you know, we do have new crafters every single day and beginner crafters as well. So I'm sorry if I'm teaching you to suck eggs. But the channel is about learning. So, so you can see that there and you can see there's a lovely score line there and a lovely score line there. So I haven't got to worry about have I got the score lines in place. Am I folding it the right way? It doesn't matter. It folds any way you want it to. Forward, back. Okay. So here we have our little bit of an easel going on. So that's the base layer. So let's move that along. And let's move on to the next stage. So we don't need this anymore. We need the next one. So in our set as well, we get the lovely mat and layer and we get the decorative element. Okay. So I'll just create a little bit of space, if at all possible, in this studio. So we're going for teal today. We normally pink and orange today with teal. So I've got my lovely mat and layer here. So I'm just going to pop it on here. And we'll die cut this one. Just nearly dropped my die cutting machine off the table. I managed to catch it though, just by sheer luck. So you can see you've got your flat there and this is where you're going to pop your glue or your sticky adhesive or whatever you use. Oh crikey. The studio's coming crashing down. <laughs> Can't tell it's had enough, can you? It's like my studio is ready for the move as well, let me tell you. So I have cut that one out look and you get this beautiful decorative element here but I am also going to cut it again if I've got enough card I have so I'll run it through again and get two and then we've got a lovely pattern for the bottom of our card so the easiest way I find to construct these is lay the whole thing flat like so and then you've got your little flap here just grab this um, piece of card that's running through because it drops off the end of the table. It might kill somebody. <laughs> I'll just say that there for now. So the best way I can describe to set this up is lay it flat on your table like so, bring it in and this little flap here is where you'll pop your adhesive. So I'm just going to pop my tape runner across there. If you pop glue here, you won't get a stand up card, okay? It needs to just be on this flap. I'll just pop some glue on here. And then with my decorative element here, I'm just going to sit it on top and I'm going to pop it down as if I was just doing a mat and layer on a card, you know the layering? So I'll pop it on, once I'm happy it's all in place, push down on my flap and then we have our amazing easel. You see that there? Let me show you. It'll stand up like so on your side. Easy as that. How cool is that? Now traditionally we make square and rectangular easels. It's a beautiful thing to be able to create some shaped ones, isn't it? So <coughs> I'm really, really pleased with these ones. The creative team have done a fabulous job. So I'll just set that aside. So this one, the extra one that we cut, I'm just going to move that out of the way. And this one can be the base here, can we see? So it's all coming together. It's just a case of picking your layers and your colours that you want. You can 
see now it's coming together beautifully so my cards wouldn't be my cards without some ink on them so that's what I'm gonna do so I'll just set these two aside I'll just pop these back in the carrier envelope because it's inevitable something will happen to them before tomorrow's show so this is our lovely decorative part so what we're going to do is we're going to take some piece of white cardstock and we'll cut this one out I'll set this one aside pop the white cardstock on there and then just pop it on to my white cardstock now I am only going to do the one I think in fact just in case I am going to do two I will pop it through normal then I'll save my cardstock and then we'll run this one through and then we'll have a little bit of fun with some colour I think instead of just cardstock albeit it is lovely to use just cardstock I still always revert back to my colouring ink, watercolours, pens you know me, it all depends what mood I'm in, I'm surmising it's the same for you guys at home and then when it pops out just take some time with it because it's quite delicate is this one give it a shake so it will catch on that corner, oh, on that little corner there there we go And then you get this beautiful, just flick them out. If you have a poke tool, just pop them out with a poke tool. They generally do just come out with a little bit of a flick and then a little bit of easing out. <coughs> I don't know what's happened to me, my throat's gone now. It's all talking I've been doing, I tell you. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you've got this beautiful frame. Can we see that there? Absolutely gorgeous. I really love the square one. You know I'm a rectangle kind of girl, but today I'm going to be square. It's good to step out of your comfort zone sometimes. So I'll set this aside and I'll come back to that. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make this a little bit inky and I'm just going to grab my Eureka. So <coughs> obviously my mat, I have turned it over because of all the mixed media stuff I've been doing it, it's in a horrific state and I'm quite embarrassed about it. So I've turned my mat over just until we get to the new place. So here I have some distress inks. I have fossilised amber, mermaid lagoon, peacock feathers now I've tried to keep in theme with my cardstock okay so first of all let's go with the color that's pretty much near as my cardstock so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop some of this ink onto the top of my Eureka just random get some good old color on there and today rather than spritzing with water I'm going to use this new stuff which is the pearly winks pearl mist and I'll just show you here shake from the side got some ball bearings in there this is a new product we are um, now housing at stamps by me and it's absolutely fabulous so instead of spritzing with water I'm going to spritz with this can we see how gorgeous this is this is now when you first see it you think oh my goodness me that's going to overwhelm my car it's going to be super sparkly but it actually is quite delicate and that's the reason why I like it so um, pearly winks are over on a chander I believe so um, but the results are really, really lovely. So I'm just going to spritz that colour there. And all I'm going to do is, with my cardstock, I'm going to pick up... Can we see that there? Just get like a bit of a tea dye going on. Now, this is normal cardstock. It's nothing fancy, so it, it's full of chalk content. So it should absolutely drink that ink like a little dream. Can we see that there? And it, can you see the sparkle in that? I hope you can. It's really lovely very delicate but lovely so we have the whole range of pearly winks on our website from January um, but all the same if you want to go and check them out they are a family run business 
um, brother and sister business and they're doing really really well so they do lots of inky backgrounds so if you are really into your inky backgrounds Donna does some fabulous techniques using these inks so that's like one colour I always choose to um, do one colour at a time uh, I, I don't like to contaminate, I like the definition between two colours. So I, the one that I used was this one, so I'm going to now use the fossilised amber. I'm just going to spritz again if it allows, just it helps if you, there we go. I had it on off there so I don't know how I managed to spray. Just one second. There we go. I had it on the off position and it still sprayed. And then I've just twisted it all the way around. It's my fault. I'm stupid. It's not my fault, honest. <laughs> oh, it's like crafting in your, your own home, isn't it? So, fossilised amber. Let's pick up some of that colour. And hopefully this will be bright. There we go, this is the sort of look. I'm not going to put anything else on there, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to clean my Eureka. And I'm going to leave that, I'm happy with that. That's probably as distressed as you're going to get out of me. So I'll just give that an ugly blast off and that's got a lovely sparkly finish, can you see that? Yeah. So you could absolutely do two of these, one at the top of your easel to stand up and one on the base, but I'm just going to go with the um, top for now. So, get a tidy station. So here is the lovely Lilith, which I've pre-stamped because I just want to show you what I mean about the skeletal side of things. Let me just grab the um, stamps and dies, she says. which is this one. So I stamped this one here. And this is what happens if you use the die. So <coughs> traditionally, it's really, really difficult to see through a die, isn't it? But because it's got open spaces, I can see where I'm popping it. Just pop that in there for now. I'll just grab my um, die cutting machine here and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So pop that on there like so. And when I pop it on, I don't want to see any lines. Okay, so I can still see a line there. So I know I need to budge. If as long as I can't see any lines, I know I'm good to go. Okay, so pop it on. You need to lean in if you need to. Sorry about the bad hair day. Uh, lean in and when you're happy, put it in place. And then we can die cut it. my mat. Just get my blade to get it off my mat. And then when you pop all the bits out, can we see that there? It's absolutely gorgeous. In the set as well, just pop, make sure you pop all your bits out. In the set as well, you get the beautiful matte and layer as well. So when you... Um, come to do a stopper or something you've got the beautiful mat and layer hmm, shall we do let's do the mat and layer so let's get rid of that one so in the set also you get the outline so this is going to give you the lift so let's just see which one it is so it's that one 
pop everything else away, keep a tidy station. It just gets a bit crazy cray if we don't keep on top of it. So with this outline then, I think what we'll do is we'll do the outline on black simply because our base layer, if I've got enough black here, our base layer, can I get it in there? Like it was meant to be. Just simply because our base layer has that lovely tealy colour, so I, just to make it stand out a little bit, we'll pop it on black. So you can see it's all starting to come together now. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, because the pieces have popped out of here, if you cut it out of white and then out of pink, you could paper piece the pink back into the white and then the white back into the pink. And it looks like a paper pieced flower. It looks stunning. So here we have our beautiful mat and layer. I'm popping everything back in its place because it's going straight in my bag for TV tomorrow. So, <clears throat> with this element then, all I'm going to do is... So you could um, create your watercolour back because it'd look lovely like matte and layered, sorry, matte and layered onto your watercolour background if you wanted to. There's so much you can do with them. Really, really different. I really, really do like them. So I'm just popping that onto the back of my hand. Please do a skin test yourself. Make sure you're not going to have an allergic reaction um, before you do this at home. And then I'm just going to pop that onto that black matte and layer. Now if we got the teal and cut it out of teal and pop the teal in those five petals there, it would look beautiful. And I might actually do that before I take the picture for Facebook. So make sure you check out the Facebook picture. So I'm happy with that one. So this is drying nicely. Let's set this aside. So our cards coming together beautifully. So I've picked three pens that are going to go well. Here we go. And I've stamped the two lilies. And I'm just going to show you a little bit of colouring. Basic colouring, two stage colouring. So I've got this lovely Y41 on the leaves because it ties in with my background. You see that there? And then I've got, let's turn it the right way, Tony, B63 and B62. So whatever you've got, um, I think these are out of a 60 collection, but you could do your own colours from the florals, from the greens, the greys, whatever you want to do. So I've started it already. So all I did basically was. So this is your two stage colouring. So all I did was I took the B63, which is this one, and I just coloured the whole um, lily flower itself in the one colour. Turn your artwork around when you're doing it, when you're colouring, don't um, hurt your wrist. And then for the second colour, I didn't go back in and blend with the, with the first colour, I just went with, straight in with my second colour. Can you just zoom in a little bit more please? I'll just show you this little, you know yesterday on Monday when we did our uh, colouring and I showed you the tick, ticking formation, uh, like so, like this. Um, Thank you. That's all you're going to do. So where these lines are here, you're just going to flick out and it will initially be a little bit dark, but it will evaporate and it will give you instant light and shade. So from two pens, I don't, we're here at Stamps By Me, we're doing this two stage colouring. We're keeping it simple because uh, you can still get beautiful results with um, two pens. Now, if you do like an absolute seamless blend, you can go back over with the light colour if you want to. But if you are an advanced colourist, you will already probably be using two, three colours. But here at Stamps By Me, we are starting out with our two colours. Um, and you will naturally um, pick up that third pen. It's not forced, it's just going to naturally happen. So you end up with some beautiful 
realistic 3D flowers really. So <coughs> what I'm going to do with these now is, let's just set that aside, I'm going to cut these out. Make sure I've got the right die. Is that the right die? Yep. Yeah. So let's cut these out. So I'm just going straight on the stamp this time, not with the skeleton, not with the skeleton die, which we just used for this one. I'm just going straight on with the outline, okay? And this is going to give us our lovely border around. Now, if you're not a fan of the white border, just take your Distress Ink and pop a bit of colour around. I may still do that, I'll see. So I'll just cut this one first. You see, because my mat's the wrong way up, everything's just sticking to it. It's not a good sketch. We'll pop, pop that one out. See that there? The note to self, don't do your techniques on your artwork. We'll have to do a little bit of shading now, won't we? It's inevitable. So let's bring in the colour. this one out so we've got two lovely flower embellishments to go to go with whether we'll need them both I'm not sure but I always do like to have more than I need snip into them if I need to so let's just get I'm sorry if you can hear my son he is meant to be Paul I believe it or not I think he's playing with the dog <laughs> so I'm just gonna make sure my brush is clean so if I've not cleaned it before all you do to get these brushes clean is rub them on some white card until it brushes clean and that's absolutely fine now. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go around with a little bit of this um, Mermaid Lagoon. So I'm just going to pop it on here first just to make sure I'm happy with it and then when I've got rid of the excess ink I'm just going to slowly take it onto the edge and just get rid of that nasty white edge. Can we see that there? all the way around. I'm not doing it heavy because I do like a little bit of white so you can see the difference there when you sit that one on top of that one you can see um, the difference. So these brushes are, I don't know whether I dare say it because you'll all crash my website these brushes are back in stock a week tomorrow okay <laughs> so um i didn't expect them to sell out as quick as they did i'm so sorry i was on the school run when somebody messaged me to say they'd all gone and i nearly fell through the base of my car but um they will be back in stock a week on thursday so just keep your eye on the website i will pop a post on there to let you know so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put my easel flat here and then i'm going to stick this one so I'm just going to pop some tape in here because we've got the wheat because it's just normal cardstock we have got that nasty hump lumps and bumps which we all hate so I'm just going to get plenty of tape on there so that's going to stick down and then I'm just going to pop some glue on my hand again And then when we come to put our artwork in the centre of here, it's a little bit difficult when it's got a bump in it, but it's still all the same. It'll still be fabulous, I'm sure. 
Make sure I get that centre stuck down first and then I'll concentrate on the rest. Just get all that glow off my hand. There we go. And then we've got our beautiful like decorative front there. Can we see how how nice that is there? So it's coming together. So <coughs> I always do two. Whether I use two is another story. So we could go for the two on there if you wanted to. We could maybe do the two as an arch. Two sides. But I think I think this is probably the better option. I think you'll all be screaming at me going, no way. And then, before I've made my decision, this is my stopper. I've uh, not used the stoppers in the set. I'm just, I've made my own with the floral embellishment. So I'm going to pop one pad, double pad your stopper at the base. And then you know for definite that your card is going to stand proud. So decide whereabouts you want your card to stand. So if you pop it there like so, you're going to have your card standing truly proud like so and then with these ones I'm going to just stick these flat and I maybe will stick a sentiment in there we'll see do we think we should just go with the one and do a sentiment here what do we think I think we should just go with the one guys so it's looking a little bit overwhelming if I pop this one on too. Yeah, we'll just go with the one. So, as you can see, I'll just show you from, I'll try and show you from all angles. So, you've got your beautiful easel, you've got your, your tab to stand proud, the front, and I will stamp a sentiment on here. There we go. All done. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. It's a, it was only one demonstration, but it was from start to finish. So it's there to encourage you, or not to encourage you, just to show you that it is as easy as it looks on the packaging. If you're still a little bit thinking, oh, I'm still not quite sure how you did that, you can obviously watch this video back, but I am live tomorrow at eight o'clock on Create and Craft, and I will go, go through it again, stage by stage. It is only two dies, uh, and you will end up with a beautiful easel. So I will be back with you next week. Here's a little inspiration before you go. Take care, everyone. Bye.